Bonjour, good morning everyone. I'm Michael McKay and welcome to our third Swiss style Ducosby TV broadcast in collaboration with Ducosby Bank here in Geneva. It's a rather cold morning this morning and my two guests are high profile men in the discreet industry of private aviation. I have with me Greg Thomas, who's president and CEO of Private Air, and Rob Wells, CEO of Tag Aviation Holding. Now, Tag Aviation is the market leader, but both gentlemen would acknowledge that there's quite a difference in size between them. And the two companies are important in the private aviation business here in and out of Switzerland. And this is the business sector that we shall be examining this morning. So welcome, Greg. Welcome, Rob. Nice to have you with us. Good morning, Thank Michael. Let me start our conversation with you, Greg, and please tell us briefly the current state of the private aviation sector from your point of view and the reasons, if you have any, to be cheerful, or is it just tough out there these days? Uh, thank you, Michael. Um, the private aviation industry right now is, in a, I would say, in a state of um, stasis. It has been for a few years now. Um, we're not seeing massive amounts of growth. Um, in fact, I was looking at uh, ground handling numbers here for Geneva, for, for our sector, which have shrunk another 5% year on year, 2013 over 2012. And this has been a trend for the last three to four years. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We actually provide services, as does private air. And um, yeah, I would, I would concur that we have a shrinking market here, slowly shrinking. And I, of course, the question which people must be wondering is why is that happening? Well, well, give us some, some insights into what's going on. Well, I think, you know, the, the <coughs> private aviation market is a very, very uh, reactive barometer to the state of the general economy. Mm. When people are feeling rich, when their stock portfolios are up, um, they, they travel more in, in their private jets and they, and they buy newer and better private jets. And uh, at the moment uh, in Europe, well, we know what the state of the general economy is so there's not everybody's hunkered down and uh, there's not much um, not much growth on the horizon for the moment but when you say uh, the business sector are we talking Europe essentially or are we talking the global business I mean how do you how do you see it from your perspective in Geneva from a from a global perspective each each market is different it I is would different. say Europe is uh, is a static market, um, perhaps retrenching a, a little bit. The United States is clearly starting to uh, recover, although it's a very, very slow recovery. Um, we've been active in Asia for uh, seven years, and that market continues to grow slightly slower, but uh, slightly slower from a, from a 10 to 15% growth rate is still quite attractive. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and is this new business that's coming in some of these markets, or is it business that was there that is now just beginning to find new life, so to speak, Ron? Well, certainly in, in Asia, it's new business. Um, business aviation and its capabilities were virtually unknown 10 years ago. And today, because uh, particularly in mainland China and in South Asia, where the businesses that were local are becoming far more international and the need for, for travel and especially efficient travel is becoming more and more important. And so they reach to international companies like your own rather than try to sort of grow home businesses. I think uh, Greg would agree that our business is one where experience is of the utmost importance, largely because safety is the, is the main driver, but then also it's uh, caretaking of a very expensive asset, making sure that the entire process of travel happens seamlessly, because that's, that's one of the key reasons why uh, a company or an individual owns an airplane. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, China has, has grown uh, tremendously and started from a very small start 10, 15 years ago. In 2001, the largest uh, operator in, in mainland China had six airplanes. Mm -hmm. That same operator today has 60. This so is a Chinese, this Chinese, is a local company. Local Chinese yeah. company, yeah. Yeah. biggest player in the market. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and, and we see the Asia-Pacific Rim in the next 15 years to be you know, the major center of growth, um, not only for the world economy, but, but in our business in particular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And our experience has been similar. Uh, five years ago, we had five aircraft, and today we have 46. So it's been very dramatic growth, yeah. not unlike what we saw in Europe uh, seven, eight years ago. Yeah. Yeah, we, just to change something a little bit, we had Harry Homeister recently speaking at an event just not far from here, and he talked about the similarity, and he was talking in terms of profitability between European scheduled airlines, scheduled airlines, and African scheduled airlines, um, that basically neither group was making any money, or not enough money. And I just wondered if that kind of experience is what you're seeing in the private airline sector, or uh, is your arithmetic different? 
Can you talk about that? Um, our, they, the two industries could not be more different. I've often said that with the exception of the fact that uh, the equipment has engines and wings, that's, that's where the similarity ends. But it seems counterintuitive to people who are not in the industry that a scheduled carrier could be so different from a private carrier. Well, the, the scheduled carrier, and, and Greg can speak uh, more accurately to this, is dealing with, um, with largely a commodity. We, are, we in the private aviation industry are not. We're dealing with finding solutions um, that um, are not commodity-based pricing. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Because I'm just, just drill a bit deeper for us. Well, I mean, yeah, if you, if you look at Europe, uh, um, I mean, I, I take a slight issue with that because I think in Europe we've got to the stage where it has become a commodity mm -hmm. almost. Mm -hmm. You have so many players in the market and in the States is the worst of all. I mean, they have 2,000 private jet operators in, we're ac uh, working in the air taxi space with an average fleet size of one and a half airplanes. Mm -hmm. um, in Europe, the same. Um, in uh, in Africa, the, the, the problem you have is that, that there's a tremendously large population, but mm. a very small population that can afford to yeah. buy an airline yeah. ticket. As a result, um, Africa attracts um, older, older airline equipment yeah. in the 20 to, to 30 year old range and, and has, has poorer, um, poorer safety record yeah. as a result. Um, that actually opens up op opportunities for the business aviation market because Western companies doing business in Africa, um, w you know, want to fly in, in safe uh, equipment, and the ch and actually the most cost-effective means of doing that is using private aviation. So ironically, although African commercial aviation is doing poorly, uh, private jets in Africa are doing very very well because you can pretty much charge what you like if you have a safe, available business jet uh, based in the region. But let's just peel back a little bit on that. When you talk about a commodity, when I think of a commodity, I think of a coffee bean or sugar. I mean, how can it be that these two sectors can be as similar or dissimilar as a coffee bean is to uh, a branded product like um, toothpaste or washing powder? Well, I think I'd have to agree with Greg when he, when he assesses the European charter market. Yeah. Um, Tag, TAG is a more diversified company, so there's many other uh, revenue sources for us than strictly charter. But it, 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 the internet has become a very efficient means of carrying, comparing prices, whether it's looking at whether EasyJet or BA is, is going to be uh, the lowest price ticket, yeah. or frankly, if chartering an aircraft, there are many means uh, today available to anyone okay. looking to charter an aircraft. I see what you mean now. Okay. I mean, you know, uh, rec <coughs> recently I was uh, listening to a speech from Christoph Muller, the, he's the CEO of um, Aer Lingus, yeah. and he was making the point that it, it's his firm belief there are 500 airliners flying in Europe today making a loss. Mm -hmm. Um, and these are the, the regional and local feed um, airplanes that, that bring passengers to the hubs because generally regional and, and uh, continental flying within Europe is, is absolutely that. So you have commodity-based pricing yeah. which bears no relation to the actual cost of the flying. So, uh, so as, as us, as all of us as, as airline consumers, uh, yeah, we're all happy to, that we can pay £99 absolutely. on EasyJet. Sure, but, uh, but, but £99 on British Airways um, probably means f you know you're getting a, a hundred pound subsidy from BA to, to actually you, fly on the plane. So the shareholder, you're, you're saying that the shareholder from these private companies is subsidising these half empty or less than half empty airplanes that are flying around, feeding in to their own. So they have a business interest. This yeah. is the because, regional, the regional, yeah, the regional, regional airlines. Yeah. yeah. The business interest is to get people on the wide bodies exactly. to fly, yeah. to fly into intercontinental. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly.